Father God, most gracious, most merciful. Uh, my speech is going to be on the greatness of God today. Um, I, I didn't put like the corny jokes or whatever, it's just my mom's idea and I didn't want to say no. So, yeah. If you're going to make fun of someone, make fun of her. So, um, I'm going to read a few verses here. I'm saying that this morning. Um, 4057, the creation of the heavens and the earth is even more awesome than the creation of the human being, but most people do not know. God is the one who holds the heavens and the earth, lest they vanish. If anyone else is, if anyone else is to hold them, they will most certainly vanish. He is clement, forgiving. So um, I'm going to be playing like clips of the same video uh, throughout this. I just found a really cool video a while ago, and I thought it would be a good topic to give a speech on. So uh, yeah, and I'll read that after, God willing. Voyager 1 is currently traveling at 17 kilometers every single second, but even at that speed, it won't break out of the reach of our solar system for another 30,000 years. So that was just a small clip from it. Uh, yeah. Trust me, they'll get a little longer. I just I had to make that work. So yeah, basically it's just saying uh, we, sent, we, we sent out the Voyager 1 space probe into the universe to gather information and pictures of the universe for us, different planets uh, in our solar system. And it's moving at a constant speed of 11 miles per second. Uh, that's almost as fast as Shane will run if I tell him there is a McLaren park down the street. <laughs> Stop. Uh. All right, next clip. Next clip, guys. Next clip. Once we go beyond the solar system, we arrive in our interstellar neighborhood. Here we shift to the light year unit of measurement, which is the distance that light travels in a full Earth year, or about 9.461 trillion kilometers. The star Proxima Centauri here is the closest other star to us other than our sun, but it's still 4.24 light years away from us. To put that into perspective, if it was heading in the right direction, it would still take Voyager 1 over 70,000 years to reach it. In other words, if you drove your car at 100 kilometers an hour like in our previous example to the moon, it would take over six times longer than the entire age of the universe is just to finally get there, and it wouldn't even exist still when you arrive. When we zo so, um, it's a few points. It's pretty cool. Uh, just so you know, one light year is 9.461 trillion kilometers, which is about, how do you say that? Oh, 5 trillion, 878 billion, 625 million. Oh, no, it's a bigger one than that. I don't, just read it for yourself. Quintillion, quintillion, there you go. So the universe's age is about 13.82 billion years old. So it would take about 82.92 billion years to reach Proxima Centauri at a constant speed of 62 miles per hour. That's about the time it takes for my mom to get ready. <laughs> I don't know why you said that about yourself. <laughs> That's true, yeah. Hey. Zoom out even further, we can see the entire Milky Way galaxy, inside of which Earth is located right here. This yellow dot is the furthest extent of humanity's radio broadcasts throughout history, which means that any possible aliens who live outside of this range... We know there's no aliens, it's just... just don't, don't make fun of me are totally unaware of humanity's presence. It's complete silence outside of this yellow dot as far as we are currently aware. We know that for sure. The entire galaxy spans over 100,000 light years from end to end. There are over 100 billion stars and over 100 billion planets inside of our galaxy. But you have never seen the full glory of the galaxy at night, because 99% of the stars that you can see with the naked eye are limited to this small, tiny region right here. But even this massive galaxy is nothing compared to the rest of what's out there. So, yeah, that's pretty crazy. Um, we know from the Quran that there's no such thing as life outside of Earth, but even if there was, they wouldn't know of our existence because our radio signals wouldn't reach them if they were outside of the dot shown in the video. So, that, I mean, our radio, I mean, we've gotten pretty good with, like, cellular connections and stuff, and even then we can barely get out of a little square or circle. 
So when you look, and when you look up at night and see all the stars, you're really just seeing a small portion of the entire Milky Way galaxy. So you can uh, imagine how insignificant we are on this tiny moat called planet Earth. In this unfathomably large universe, God is fully aware of anything that is smaller or larger or larger than a mustard seed. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to say that twice. <laughs> Further, and we arrive at the local group of galaxies, a collection of 54 different galaxies that is. Audio. I don't think I did. My bad, my bad. <laughs> now, now it works. It's about 10 million light years across. But zooming out even. So, cut out basically, is that local group is 10 million light years across from end to end further and we can see the Virgo supercluster of which the local group here is just a tiny segment of. There are at least 100 other groups of galaxies just like our own local group inside of here and the distance from one side to the other is a mind-numbing 110 million light years. But even the massive Virgo supercluster is nothing but a quiet and tiny lobe of the great Laniakea supercluster, an enormous structure that is home to our galaxy as well as 100,000 other galaxies. The distance from one side to the other is 520 million light So if, if we're thinking about the, hey, I know the cropping was bad on me, all right? But if, if we think about, um, our Milky Way galaxy, we thought, wow, that's huge. And now we're just seeing this compared to the Lanya Kea supercluster. It's just a tiny little, um, which, uh, yeah. This is a real oh, life my bad. <laughs> I did not mean to do that. Press the wrong button. Oh, there we go. So yeah, now we can begin to understand why, what it means to say, glory be to my Lord, the great, as we bow down during our contact prayers. God has created such a vast, incredible universe. This is where it's like getting pretty crazy. Even there, we can zoom out all the way to the entire observable universe and see that even the titanic Laniakea supercluster is just a tiny and insignificant part of everything. This is the observable universe, and it contains everything that we know of. It is home to at least two trillion different and individual galaxies, which together contain more stars than there are grains of sand on the entire Earth. The distance from Earth to any side of the observable universe is 46.5 billion light years, which means that the entire width is 93 billion light years across. What's perhaps even <laughs> this is a real life. Oh my God! Why is it keep doing possible? that? It's all good. Uh, so yeah, can you believe that there are more stars in the observable universe than there are grains of sand in the world? So thinking about all the little beaches and um, the on the trails, you know, those are sand too. So <laughs> you can't forget about that. The desert, yeah. So, can't believe I forgot that. Uh, yeah, but the observable universe is like the uh, universe that we are able to observe. Ever since the Big Bang happened, the universe has constantly been expanding. But we humans still aren't able to see it all, or see it all, see all of it because the light hasn't reached us. So it's kind of a hard concept to like think about. But um, pretty much, if there was a planet like, and we could somehow see like five billion light years away from us, and we see a guy and he falls on his face from that, we we see that. That happened about five billion years ago. But the light from, or the, yeah, the light is finally reaching our eyes, so that, and we can see that now. So that's kind of how it is when the uh, universe is constantly expanding, our, the, the light that is coming from the expansion, it's constantly reaching us. So if we were able to see to the edge, we'd constantly be able to see further and further and further. So, I said it. Your Lord is the one God who created the heavens and the earth in six days, then assumed all authority. The night overtakes the day as it pursues it persistently, and the sun, the moon, and the stars are committed to serve by his command. Absolutely, he controls all creation and all commands. Most exalted is God, Lord of the universe. Footnote. The six days of creation are allegorical. They serve as a yardstick to let us know the relative complexity of our infinitesimal planet Earth. It was created in four days. 
So, I mean, we all know that God obviously could have done it in a millisecond if he wanted to, but to give us a concept of really how big it is, he, you know, he took his time. He was like, you know, I'll just, I'll just be, take it easy, you know, and uh, he took his time so we could get a better understanding. So, yeah, this, this is like... Even more interesting, however, is what actually lies beyond the observable universe. Keep in mind that the observable universe is all that we can currently see, and it's entirely possible that the rest of the universe outside of it is vastly larger and more fantastic than we can possibly ever imagine. We simply don't know what else is out there, because the light from these incredibly distant places has not yet had enough time in the universe's history to reach us yet back on Earth. And the light from some places may never reach us at all. Because some parts of space very far away from Earth are expanding away from us faster than the speed of light, that means that the light from these places will never, in an infinite amount of time, reach Earth. Meaning that even if humanity is eternal and exists forever, there will still be an Obviously unknown not. number of places in the universe that we will never know about or ever see. So, it is very likely that as unbelievably enormous as it seems, the observable universe is just a tiny slice of what we can currently see of the entire universe. According to the theory of cosmic inflation that was proposed by Dr. Alan Guth, if it is assumed that cosmic inflation began at 10 to the negative 37th of a second after the Big Bang, and with the assumption that the size of the universe before inflation began was equal to its age times the speed of light, then this would seem to suggest that at the present day, the entire universe is 150 sextillion times larger than the observable universe. That number for crazy. reference looks like this, with this many zeros. Let Just like look at that. <laughs> That's a pretty big number. This number sink in for just a moment. This would be similar to you thinking that the entire observable universe, everything that you could see, was the size of a light bulb, but then realizing that in reality the entire universe is larger than the former planet of Pluto. Imagine a light bulb in the center of Pluto, but we inside the light bulb were totally unaware that Pluto existed outside of it, and that's a similar situation to this. We are all so unbelievably small, but you shouldn't worry. I cut it off there because I forget, he just said something really, I don't think it was correct, but he was right about us being incredibly small, you know. We're, if, if you think about it, we're so small. And then if you think about that God has all of that just like this, it's like really unfathomable. Let's see. Um, greatness of God. They can never fathom the greatness of God. The whole earth is within his fists on the day of resurrection. In fact, the universes are folded within his right hand. Be he glorified, he is much too high above needing any partners. Our universe, with its billion galaxies and a billion trillion stars, uncountable to zillions of heavenly bodies, spanning many billions of light years, is the smallest and innermost of seven universes. This is too incomprehensible this, oh, this incomprehensible vastness of the, seven, of the seven universes is within God's hand. Such is the greatness of God. See Appendix 6. And I'm going to read Appendix 6. It's kind of long, so just bear with me. Um, we learn from verse 39 and 67 that God's greatness is far beyond human comprehension. The verse states that all seven universes are folded within God's hand. Supported by the Quran's formidable mathematical code, we are taught that our universe is the smallest and innermost of seven universes. Meanwhile, our scientific advances have shown us that our galaxy, the Milky Way, is 100,000 light years across, and that our universe contains a billion such galaxies and a billion trillion stars, plus countless decillions of heavenly bodies. Our universe is estimated to span distances in excess of 20 billion light years. Definitely. It's a lot, but it's the last one. Don't worry. Um, if, so count the stars. If we take only a quintillion so, of the stars and simply count from them from zero to quintillion, one count per second, day and night, this will take 32 billion years, more than the edge of the universe. That is how long it will take just to count them. But God created them. Such is the greatness of God. 
We can appreciate the vastness of our universe if we imagine going on a space odyssey. When we leave planet Earth towards the sun at the speed of light, we reach the sun after 93 million miles in eight minutes. It will take us more than 50,000 years at the, uh, at the speed of light to exit our galaxy. From the outer limit of the Milky Way, our planet is, not, is invisible. Not even the most powerful telescope can detect our tiny Earth. We have, spent, we have to spend more than 22 million years at the speed of light to reach our next door galaxy. At least 10 billion years at the speed of light must be spent to reach our outer limit of our universe. From the outer limit of our universe, even the Milky Way is a speck of dust in a large room. The second universe surrounds our universe, the third universe is larger than the second, and so on. More accurately, our universe should be considered the seventh universe, surrounded by the sixth, which is surrounded by the fifth universe, and so on. Can you imagine the vastness of the first, outermost universe? No number exists to describe the circumference of the first universe. This incomprehensible vastness is within the, is within the fists of God's hand. From the outer limit of the outermost universe, where is the planet Earth? How significant is it? On the infinitesimal moat called Earth, such minuscule creatures as Mary, Jesus, and Muhammad lived, yet some people set up these powerless humans as gods. God's greatness is represented by not only by the fact that he holds the seven universes in his hand, but also by, God, or by the fact that he fully controls every atom, even subatomic components everywhere in the greater universe. For those of you that don't know what a subatomic component is, it's like, it's really small. Like, <laughs> it's like, I learned it in chemistry, but I don't really remember. So yeah, yeah, that stuff. Yeah. Uh, so Marshall, there are countless examples of the greatness of God, but one of my favorite is the construction of the universe and the complexity of it. To think that everything talked about in the, that video is all in God's hand is unimaginable. And what's amazing is that with all the creatures that God has created, he pays attention to every single one of them as if they were the only creatures in existence. Such is, such is the greatness of God. Yeah. And uh, I just want to have a quick shout out to my boy Wami. Awesome guy. Uh, you should meet him if you haven't. Huh? Anybody got any questions? I don't know a lot, so like, don't ask me hard questions. Do you remember what, how big, do you remember how big our, our uh, local cluster was? I know local, uh, you know, uh, uh, Gallic, not, no. no, I don't, okay. I'm sorry about that, I don't. Uh, I can send you the link to the video if you want, you can watch it for yourself. I'll be sure to do that. Yeah, I, Eunice might have an answer, yeah? Oh, oh I thought he was going to look it up, never mind. I think that was a fantastic presentation. Thank you so much for the reminder of how vast, powerful, and amazing God's creation is. I mean, and imagine the creator behind such universe. I happen to have my Quran in front of me, and I thought I would just read a couple things from the introduction that would also, I thought, add to this. Just because even though we talk about the vastness of space and that our radio signals haven't gone out there and there are no aliens... <laughs> Um, God is very, um, the messenger of the covenant helps us understand that there are actually countless creatures in God's universe outside of us humans. So um, I'm reading the introduction and we see that it says, while the vast majority of the guilty creatures, um, that would be the ones in the heaven, heavenly feud um, who didn't uphold God's authority. So it, the vast majority of the guilty creatures took advantage of this opportunity while a minuscule minority consisting of about 150 billion creatures failed to take advantage of this offer. Um, so that tells you clearly like there's a, the, we're talking the ratio we're talking about here. And if you remember what that bar chart looks like, it's a really long, long bar with this tiny little section at the end for, the, for those of us who are the um, resistors, objectors, the guilty ones. Um, and then it also says, the vast majority of God's creatures, so not the ones, not the 150 billion, but the vast majority, so again, that ratio, ca God's countless creatures belong in this category. And it reminds us, the number of the angels, those are ones who did uphold God's authority, is so enormous, the angels do not even know how many of them there are. Wow. Only God knows their number. Wow. So, mashallah. It's pretty crazy. Oh, 
One thing about aliens, if you didn't know this, they uh, like scientifically proven uh, squids are the closest things to aliens, like octopuses and squids. If you guys want to know about aliens, that's the closest you're ever going to get. So I wanted to make a comment. It's well, those turn. are the closest thing to it. Um, I wanted to make a comment. Moshe, know that was a really good um, presentation. But guys, keep in mind that that was only the smallest innermost universe. There's also six other ones that are even bigger, and those are all within God's hand. I yeah, mean, and that's just so amazing. And Moshe, um, Delilah touched on it, but like all of these stars are actually creatures that repented. They're all submitters who repented. I mean, we're just so small. I mean, praise God. Oh, thank you.